I will now be reading Maxine Cumin's Woodchucks. Gassing the woodchucks didn't turn out right. The knockout bomb from the feed and grain exchange was featured as merciful, quick at the bone, and the case we had against them was airtight. Both exits shoehorned shut with putting stone, but they had a sub-sub basement out of range. Next morning, they turned up again. No worse for the cyanide than we are for our cigarettes and state store scotch. All of us up to scratch. They brought down the marigolds as a matter of course, and they took over the vegetable patch, nipping the broccoli shoots, beheading the carrots. The food from our mouths, I said, righteously thrilling to feel of the 22 the bullets' neat noses. I, a lapsed pacifist, fallen from grace, puffed with Darwinian pieties for killing, now drew a bead on the littlest woodchuck's face. He died down in the ever-bearing roses. Ten minutes later, I dropped the mother, she flip-flopped in the air and fell, her needle teeth still hooked in a leaf of early Swiss chard. Another baby next. A one, a two, a three. The murderer inside me rose up hard. The Hawkeye killer came on stage for it with. There's one chuck left. Old Wiley fellow. He keeps me cocked and ready day after day after day. All night I hunt his humped up form. I dream I sight along the barrel in my sleep. If only they'd all consented to die, unseen, gassed underground, the quiet Nazi way.